If you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I, I go, no. If you're a healthy person and you're exercising all the time and you're young and you're eating well, and like, I don't think you need to worry about this. People are much safer when they're wearing those masks indoors. And right now it's very hard to, uh, to tease apart who is vaccinated, where they are in the vaccination. So it's not just to protect themselves, but largely to protect others and really to protect the unvaccinated. Masks help. And so even though I'm, I'm vaccinated, I still wear a mask. Exactly. So why do you why do we have to do that if we're vaccinated? That's why I'm so confused. But still, we you never know. And what you're trying to do is encourage others. What message were you sending by wearing a mask outside alone? I'm watching me take it off and not put it back on to like it inside. Did you hear before I let you go? Did you hear uh, Mike Geary's um, interview with the guy from the Stern show? Oh, you're good. Chauncey Hayden. Oh, it was, oh wow. That was it's wow. such a fascinating interview. I, 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 I didn't realize. Really, we're good, we're good. I, I didn't realize. Cut, cut this call off. I don't like that. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> that was Shattuck. Oh, uh, oh, he's, oh a good, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> Get to know Shattuck's a big, big fan of our world. Of course. <laughs> what an interesting time. An interesting time. Alice, I don't know how to even begin to explain that last cut to you. I don't. I'm confused. So, several worlds are coming together here. Okay. So that last. So what happened is this: is that I filled in on WTIC mm-hmm. in Hartford last Friday, right? And I will be tomorrow as well for the rest of this week at nine to noon. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> since the the Kirk Minahan show, the mini the the mini fans. His extremely loyal following of, I think, thousands of people. Probably you're a couple orders of magnitude off still from that. I would say tens or hundreds of thousands of yes. people. Yes. Some, and some of them mm-hmm. have been deputized to peruse the uh, <laughs> dial, the terrestrial dial. I assume probably uh, mostly intercom stations. But <laughs> but they've been, they do this. They go and listen around the country and they sort of prank call the shows Okay. and drop um, meta information that would tell you they drop uh, references to the Minahan show okay. that the usual host wouldn't pick up on. Uh, Unless so they'll say, they "Yeah, I was talking to my Minifan friend Steve, stuff. and then I went to talk to my friend Kirk, and then he went." So, so anyway, I'm talking. <laughs> I saw the call last uh, Friday. It, this is a huge thing to do. This is a huge podcast, an awesome podcast of Minahan on Barstool Sports, and um, <laughs> and I've been a fan, and I've I've um, known. Kirk in a friendly way and you know you know for a long for he was even was he on Herald Radio no I tried to get him on Herald Radio that's how I kind of really met him and I was a fan of his work in EEI I tried to get him on Herald Radio and uh and then there just professionally whatever we just you know we would text Mm -hmm. here and there and as I saw him at some events whatever and but I always liked him I was he's always a real nice guy friendly guy uh despite what uh, the Boston Globe might say but uh so anyway so the Legion of Mini fans, they have standing orders to go and harass some people. <laughs> so they know that there's a, somebody, I tweeted out probably, that somebody, there's a guest host on WTIC. And the caller actually knows who I am, probably doesn't know my affiliation with the Mini fans. His name is Tim. It's usually Tim in Canton. <coughs> he called as Tim in West Hartford. <coughs> and I think I was talking about whatever, the George Floyd stuff or whatever, maybe. Cancel culture, whatever it was. And, uh... And he called, and I could tell that he was a strong kind of alpha caller, you mm-hmm. know. I so felt, he knew radio stuff. Yes, I felt like uh, that there's a chance I was being set up as I was talking to him. <laughs> and then he mentions, my friend Steve, this, and it's fine, there's plenty of Steves. And then he said, that, you, know, you know, I was talking the other day with my friend Kirk, and I was like, okay, now this has gone now to, you know, 20% chance I'm getting messed with here to... Uh, 93%. Because there's a Steve and a Kirk. I don't know any other, any other Kirks other than the captain and <laughs> Minahan. The captain. Right. Um, Actually, the guy that owned the house next door to ours in Melrose before he sold it to our friends that lived next door to us the whole time we lived there. His name was Kirk, if you remember. Thank you, Alice. That's something very relatable <laughs> to the audience. Thank you very much. So that's one other Kirk, but it's an so, unusual name. So then say. when he mentioned Blind Mike, I mean, that is an absolute whatever. Didn't he say Mike Geary? Oh, no. maybe he said Mike Geary. Okay. I, I think he said Mike Blind Mike, and I mentioned Mike Geary. So the point is is that I could tell it that he was you know, having mm-hmm. a little fun. But you know, I didn't mind at all because he actually called and was on topic. All okay. the references to people he talked about, whatever. But it was a good call. It was a, mm-hmm. a depth call. He actually plugged the podcast. 
at the beginning, mm-hmm. which I appreciated. And, you know, he, he, he knew me from Michael Graham, whatever. But anyway, so so then he does his work for them. He then takes the audio. <laughs> I hope he calls again this week. He then takes the audio, brings it over to Steve, <laughs> you know. He reported he's, back he's to a good, his... He's a good minute fan. Mm-hmm. Brings it over to Steve. His commanding officers. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, in the call, I had I had listened to the Blind Mike podcast, Mike Gary podcast, where he interviewed this guy who used to be on the Stern show, and it was a really great interview. Maybe you remember. Uh, maybe I told you about it. Or listened to it over the weekend yeah. or, or Thursday or whatever. It was a really great interview. It really – and I'm not a huge stand in Stern and opening an Anthony guy. But anyway, it was – so that's what I told him. I knew mm-hmm. – I, 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 it was my way of kind of outing him to, to ask him about the interview whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let me play this. Now that we've dragged people into this area, they thought they would never go. This is this is so. Anyway, this guy Tim then sends the audio to Steve, and Steve in the Minahan show this morning talk about it. They play the audio. Okay. And so at first they don't know who why like who what voice they're hearing until okay. Steve mentions something. So this is how this world goes: is that there's this. Tim's dispatch as this vandal goes brings back <laughs> the audio to Steve and Kirk, who then play the audio, talk about it. I then listen to their podcast because I'm a listen to it, so I'm now listening to myself getting punked by a radio by a radio that you heard on another podcast. It, You're now playing on your podcast, right? And we have fans, so it will only come full circle if you play on TIC. You and me talking about yes, uh, Kirk and Steve talking about. Tim and you talking about yes, Kirk and maybe Steve I'll have to do that. on there. Yeah, so, great. Okay. So this is so this is just the craziness of this mm-hmm. and how this works with with the, with the uh, minifans and how this like cross promotion is kind of happening. And I don't mind the call, like I told you, at all. And so they played it today, and mm-hmm. I appreciate. It. And this is what they played. Tim in West Hartford. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning. How are you, my friend? <laughs> right, I get a friend, Steve. When he was young, he wanted to be a robot. Like, I was talking to my buddy Kirk last night and a duel. One of the people said, uh, Blind Mike had said, his boss sent him an article and said, check out this article. I think you might like it. Did you hear, before I let you go, did you hear uh, Mike Geary's um, interview with the guy from the Stern Show? Oh, yeah, good. Chauncey Hayden. Oh, it was, wow. That was it's wow. such a fascinating interview. I, I didn't I realize. Really, we're gonna, I didn't I realize. Cut, this, cut this call off. I don't want to hear that. Who is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, that was Shad. Oh, oh, he's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> So, gonna say. <laughs> if we wrap up the show in about an hour, Michael DM Shattuck in uh, about 11 Oh, thanks, man. I, you're oh, great. What a great guy. You're great, too. What a great guy. I love your work, too. <laughs> he's the man. It's just two peers. God, Tim's in the slump, huh? A little bit. He's getting, he's getting called out. He's getting, you know, that's not good. You got to know Shattuck's a big, big fan of our world. Of course. <laughs> so I just think that's funny. I, I obviously, uh, and because I'm craven and pathetic, <laughs> I love the mention. <laughs> and so all of us craven and pathetic people love the mentions, and so that's I'm bringing mm-hmm. just that to the fore. And I was ta- so there you go. Let's start the show now for real, Alice. Shall we? Great. You caught Tim from West Hartford. I caught Tim from West Hartford, but no, they caught me catching Tim from West Hartford, mm-hmm. and I caught them catching me catching Tim catching Tim from, from West, West Hartford. Hartford. Great. And now every, all listeners have caught me catching catching, them, ca- catching, catching me catching Tim <laughs> from West Hartford. <laughs> And now it has been nine minutes and 30 seconds, and if you're not purely regretting this investment in your time, uh, you need to seek professional help. All right, so uh, at the White House today, I mean, where do we start? I don't even know where, where to start. White House today, Joe Biden takes what I would look to me to be about a 27-minute walk <laughs> down to where the press was set up outside the White House to tell them essentially... And it, in the walk was, of course, like a 10-second jog thing, Biden affectation yeah. that he does. So that they can, he seems virile and Yes, he's, he's absolutely not going to die soon. <laughs> so uh, so he comes out and tells mm-hmm. us all that the masks of stuff is, is over, essentially. It's not coordinated really, with the CDC, et cetera. The mask thing is over, but not over. The ac- masks are over for vaccinated people outside unless you're at a crowded event. Right. And Biden is nowhere near a crowded event and comes down with his mask on. And going he's been vaccinated the CDC. longer than any of us. Yes, going against the CDC guidance, which nobody uh, nobody can seem to understand. And a reporter asks him about this. If the risk is so low outdoors, why doesn't this new guidance apply to everybody? 
because the science indicates that the most certain way to make sure it doesn't spread if both people have been vaccinated, the people you're with and you're outside. And you chose. I don't know what he said there. I am incapable of processing those <laughs> words as anything logical. Did, what is he? What was he saying? He said the risk is the lowest if you're outside. Okay. Seem to me. I don't know. Now the Can reporter we listen said, one more time because I'm okay. unclear. If the risk is so low outdoors, why doesn't this new guidance apply to everybody? Because the science indicates that the most certain way to make sure it doesn't spread if both people have been vaccinated, the people you're with, and you're outside. Okay. And you chose to wear a mask, sir. You chose to wear a mask. You chose to wear a mask as you walked out here. What message were you sending by wearing a mask outside alone? By watching me take it off and not put it back on till I get inside. Am I missing something? <laughs> I don't understand that. What does that mean? So I guess, I guess what he's trying to say, and I'm like having to fill in a lot here, is that. Because he's showing us that he still wears it inside. So he's showing us that he was wearing it inside. Oh. And then now he's taking it off. But he's going to put it back on to go in. So he wants us to see the taking off and the putting on. So that we know that he's definitely wearing it when he's inside still. I assume all the time. I assume he wears it to bed. Because he wears it like on Zoom calls and like by his wife when they're alone. I don't know. It's a lot of people are having trouble putting together what the CDC and the health people are saying. The White House is saying. Um, Peter Ducey asked Jen Pasachi about this today. Why was President Biden the only world leader at the climate summit Zoom who was wearing a mask? Uh, because he is sending a message to the world that he is. He's sending a message to the world. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Putting in place precautions uh, and continuing to do that as leader of the United States. And I don't know what setups they all had in their... Yeah, but he could also put a life vest on. That's putting together precaution. The chances of a flash flood coming through down Pennsylvania Ave and dragging him off <laughs> are minimal. They're not nothing. Flash floods happen. People die. Right. And he could. That would be a precaution. He could mm -hmm. wear a Kevlar helmet. That could definitely be a, a precaution. And mm -hmm. actually, as a president, you know, you could make the case for could it. Could have saved a few presidents' lives if they wore Kevlar helmets right. 24-7. Yep. But he's not. But we're not because those would be absurd to us. Right. Because you can't go through life in a ball of bubble wrap on the ca in, just in case of crazy outside tiny risks. You can't live that way. Countries... That may warrant some more reporting or not, uh, but obviously he had a pool there for portions. There were additional staff there, additional personnel, and uh, that's uh, the sort of model that we uh, try to keep our. Yeah, but once again, everybody involved is vaccinated. Right. And we're told vaccinations mean freedom, but they're not acting free. That's the mm -hmm. sort of model that shows us that the vaccination doesn't dramatically give you license to change your life. Mm -hmm. So they did release this sort of graphic, like rating activities from least safe to most safe. And separate. so they will have a list of outdoor ac activities ranked from least safe to most safe and indoor activities ranked from least safe to most safe. And they still, on their graphic, they have a little indicator that shows whether you're supposed to be wearing a mask when you do it, if you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated. And they have both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated person wearing the mask for all activities indoors. There's a couple outdoors that if you're unvaccinated, that if you are vaccinated, that you can do outdoors, according to them. But vaccinated people still do all. The but they want vaccinated people to still do all indoor activities masked. That so includes we're play... visiting a barber or a hair salon. These are in order from least risky to most risky. Okay. Barber, hair salon, uncrowded indoor shopping center or museum, ride public transport with limited occupancy. Bear in mind, these are all things we've all, well, at least we've been doing all these anyway with masks on. Attend a small indoor gathering of fully vaccinated and unvaccinated people from multiple households. Indoor movie theater. Full capacity worship service. But so the vaccinated people, and we'll, we'll get to this because we have. So 
And then, so all those they have, they have, those are all green activities for vaccinated people, but they're yellow and then going into red, starting at indoor movie theater for unvaccinated people. So that okay. means they're pretty risky. Okay. But really it's vaccinated people here that we'd, we'd yeah. be wondering about because it seems to me if we go into an indoor gathering, mm -hmm. you and I, we're vaccinated. Yeah. We are not spreaders of the disease. Neither can we get the disease. Right. So we're just playing along here like dinner theater. Right. But they said, so Walensky said this today. I don't know if you have this cut, but she basically I do have, said, I get a whole bunch. Maybe we should yeah. just get to that. Because she says that it's not because we're unsafe. It's because we need to encourage other people to wear masks who aren't vaccinated. Like, if we take our masks off, then those morons who didn't get vaccinated might, like, think it's okay for them to take off their masks, too. Is basically yeah, what it's her more point protecting is. us from ourselves. Stuff's too here. But I, I know the CDC's website and their guidance is that you can gather indoors with fully vaccinated people without wearing a mask or staying six feet apart. That's so. actually for in your private home, uh, so it's not workplace guidance. And we still wear masks around here, just like you are all wearing masks. And you know who's not wearing a mask? Jen Psaki. Correct. How does this work? Well, she's an important person. You saw at the Oscars, none of them had to wear masks. Well, there was a big, they put on a scene about that. They said because they'd all been vaccinated, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that once they do their acting part, she, the woman said, consider this a movie set. During our scenes, we'll take our masks off. After that, the, the disease does know when the director says cut and hits the clappy thing. Right, good. We wear masks in our offices and continue to abide by that until that guidance changes. Alone in your offices? <laughs> all right, so let's start to get through the... Walensky stuff. She is Rochelle Walensky, Massachusetts native. She is the uh, director of the CDC. She is uh, somebody who you remember a month ago. When I first started at CDC about two months ago, I made a promise to you. I would tell you the truth, even if it was not the news we wanted to hear. Now is one of those times when I have to share the truth and I have to hope and trust you will listen. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to lose the script. And I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. We have so much to look forward to, so much promise and potential of where we are, and so much reason for hope. But right now, I'm scared. Uh, thank you guys for doing this again, as always. So uh, that's another reporter question. Remember, that was impending doom a month ago. She mm -hmm. actually uh, um, revisited that today. You know, several weeks ago when I had this feeling of impending doom and I, and I articulated that and I had, um, you know, case races going, rates going up, vaccine, uh, uh, vaccinations growing but not where we needed to be and, and deaths continuing to climb. As I look at the curve now, it's stabilizing, it's coming down. Um, the vaccinations have continued to grow um, in, in an extraordinary way. I, I think we really do need to get more and more people vaccinated. Um, as Kristen noted, we need to sort of combat the hesitancy that is out there, meet people where, we, where, where they, they are, are and encourage are? everyone oh, to good. get... So in other words, it was um, a panic alarm <laughs> with, directed by the White House. Yeah. To say, keep scaring the hell out of people. Come up with something. She said, should I go with impending doom? And he said, okay. Later in the press conference, she was more calmly uh, delivered what she was looking for. And that was just stuff. Essentially, these, these health professionals. They just want you to do stuff. Right. They lie to you and then brag about having lied to you to manipulate you to mm -hmm. act in a way. It's a, these are persuasion professionals. And they love doing it. And they can't contain their excitement when they're successful. So, this is Walensky talking about wearing masks indoors today. People are much safer when they're wearing those masks indoors, as indicated by the, the green on the right side of that graphic. And right now, it's very hard to, uh, to tease apart who is vaccinated, where they are in the vaccination. So, it's not just to protect themselves, but largely to protect others and really to protect the unvaccinated. Yeah, so we have to make sure that we wear the mask so that unvaccinated people will realize that they still have to wear masks. So we're part of the propaganda now. So unvaccinated people. Mm -hmm. Unvaccinated oh, I see. people so could infect other unvaccinated people. So we need to wear the masks to show them that it's not okay for them to go without a mask. 
So if they just want to live the way they want to live, <laughs> we have to be punished for it. <laughs> Although we should have earned the right not to wear the mask anymore. But we are now responsible. Mm -hmm. um, what's that thing that, that somebody... It's like somebody, when adults... Somebody, somebody who, mm -hmm. the guy who owns Britney now, what's that called? Conservative, her, her, conserv her conservatorship? Yes, so... Mm -hmm. They're in the conservative ship to us. Right. We ha It's like when you're a we parent. We now have more kids. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like when you're a parent and you get, like, some cookies at the store or something. Not that I would ever do this. And, like, you have one, but you have to hide them from the kids because you don't want them eating them. So it's like, I know I can eat one cookie and be fine, but I don't want them eating a bunch of cookies before dinner because I know they won't eat their dinner if I let them eat the cookies. So, like, I can have one, but I have to hide it from them. So, like, I know it's okay for me not to wear a mask, but I still have to wear one to, like, show the children, the other children who haven't gotten vaccinated yet, that, like, it's that they still have to wear a mask. I have to, like, model behavior that even though I don't really do it, that I have to model it for them so that they do it. Okay, so we all have to keep wearing masks when mm -hmm. we're somewhere. Yeah. Because we can't tell who's not vaccinated. And if they see us take our masks off, because they're, they ya might think it's okay. they're yahoos, mm -hmm. they're going to say, hot damn, and throw theirs away. <laughs> and then and then we're stuck again with a pandemic. Right. But only amongst unvaccinated people. Right. Even though at least a third of the country has been vaccinated. And that doesn't include... Uh, it, it's roughly people, half now, probably. I haven't looked at the latest people don't numbers. Have, who but have Massachusetts antibodies. is around fifty percent, right? So Massachusetts, for example, is around fifty percent, and then you have another third of people, roughly speaking. So people out of the remaining fifty percent, about a third of them, so about you know like sixteen percent or whatever, have have antibodies. So you're at like. 65 66 percent of the population that is now immune in some form from covid could they still get it yeah they probably can't really transmit it and they're almost certainly not going to have heart um strong symptoms and they're probably not going to die there was a really interesting case um a nursing home somewhere in the south i want to say maybe virginia i forget where a nursing home had a case of uh had an outbreak of covid recently um, and most of the residents had been vaccinated, but an unvaccinated staff member came in and infected a bunch of people. So about 50% of the staff had been vaccinated and about 90% of the residents had been vaccinated. So there's 83 residents, 90% of them are vaccinated. So about 75 out of the 83 are vaccinated. And out of those, 18 got sick. And most of them have pretty mild symptoms. One of those people died. Out of the eight people who were unvaccinated in the nursing home, all of them got COVID. All eight got COVID and two died. So if a quarter of the unvaccinated people in the nursing home died. Like, I'll take the odds of the vaccinated people over the unvaccinated people if I'm at risk or whatever, right? Like, it's just so none of the staff either vaccinated or unvaccinated died. But it was just it was an interesting kind mm. of case study to me because it really showed that once you're vaccinated, you still do have an albeit much lower chance of getting sick. But your chances of dying are so, so, so much diminished by the vaccine that you really don't have much more to worry about at that point in time. Okay. Okay. It's like a new kind of math for me. I am easily confused by this. <laughs> if you are fully vaccinated and want to attend a small outdoor gathering with people who are vaccinated and unvaccinated, or dine at an outdoor restaurant with friends from multiple households, the science shows if you are vaccinated, you can do so safely unmasked. All right. Well, that's all I need. So we can go now and dine outdoors mm -hmm. unmasked. Yes. We're good to go. On the CDC website, we have posted examples of numerous outdoor activities that are safe to do without a mask if you are fully vaccinated. Well, wouldn't that be all of the activities? They don't want to include um, like crowded events, like parades, like anything where you're jammed up against other people, even if you're outside. So like the Boston Marathon would be out or I'm only humoring myself Fenway. here but were protests mentioned they did not mention protests okay, okay. 
Okay, that's fine. Here we go. We'll go to the next. This is Rochelle Walensky. Um, with regard to why people um, who are vaccinated are wearing masks indoors, um, I think what we really need to convey here is we still have 50,000 cases a day. We do believe that vaccinated people are much safer when they're wearing those masks indoors, as indicated by the, the green on the right side of that graphic. No, so, we're not safer. But she's saying... That vaccinated people are much safer when wearing a mask. Did she say vaccinated or unvaccinated? Yes, yeah, so here you go. Hold on. Um, with regard to why people um, who are vaccinated are wearing masks indoors, um, I think what we really need to convey here is we still have 50,000 cases a day. We do believe that vaccinated people are much safer when they're wearing those masks indoors, as indicated by the, the green on the right side of that. So that's back to my life vest thing. So you're vaccinated yeah. people are also much safer with a life vest on, <laughs> with a snorkel on, maybe, mm -hmm. or with them at least. Who knows? Maybe you depending. should take an oxygen tank with you wherever you go. Right. I mean, just in case. Yes, because vaccinated people are vaccinated from what? COVID. Right, and the pandemic right now is of what? COVID. Okay, so I don't really then have a pandemic anymore. Yeah, you're good. Right. So, I don't need to play anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the unvaccinated people might think that... They might see me <laughs> and say... And they might think they could have a, some freedom, too. Graphic. And right now, it's very hard to, uh, to tease apart who is vaccinated, where they are in the vaccination. So, it's not just to protect themselves, but largely to protect others and really to protect the unvaccinated. And, of course, now we've all adopted the unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are new children. There are ours now. And so we have to look out for them. Even though they're choosing not to get a vaccine, mm -hmm. that's still on us. There's appointments now everywhere. Anyone yes. can get a vaccine. There's a surplus of vaccines. Yeah. Now we're, now we're good. You can go get a vaccine tomorrow morning if you want one. And then in another five weeks, you'll be fully vaccinated. Actually, with the mRNA vaccines, there are a lot of indications that about two weeks after the first dose, you have a significant amount of immunity. That's not what they trialed in the trials, so they can't really recommend that yet. But there is a lot of good evidence that they might be that one dose of the mRNA vaccines might be just as if not more effective than the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So, I mean, really, and and the thing is, now enough of the population is vaccinated and or immune from having gotten sick that um, that the disease is really diminishing in, this, in society. So the already small chance that you'll get sick if you're vaccinated is rapidly shrinking as there's just less and less COVID around in general. Okay. Okay. Um, so the HHS secretary, mm -hmm. Health and Human Services... Um, which a lot of these folks work under. Okay. Uh, is Xavier Becerris. And he was on today with Gail King on CBS. Is it Becerra? I don't Bechera. know. Becerra, yeah, I guess so. B-E-C. I could be lying too. I don't really know. His name is Xavier. You know, that's enough. We'll <laughs> give you Xavier. We'll work through that one, okay? A name that begins with an X, which is already problematic. Okay, so here's Gail King asking him a mm -hmm. similar and I would say pressing in appropriate question. I'm outside by myself. Nobody's around. Why am I wearing a mask? So this would be very helpful to know. If you're yeah. vaccinated, do you have to wear a mask outside or you don't have to wear a mask outside? Well, we weren't born with masks, <laughs> but we want to be safe and we want to protect our loved ones. And so that's why. I don't understand how that answers the question. No. Okay, so we weren't born with masks, so in other words, we don't need them by nature, but we want to be safe. Mm -hmm. But we were essentially, those of us who weren't born with masks, who have been uh, given the vaccine, mm -hmm. have essentially now been born with an immunity to the disease. Right. So on a physical level, our job is done... We're not really a player in this game anymore. Mm -hmm. But on a behavioral level, the CDC, and they're big into psychology, sees a 
problem here where behaviors might cause something like a spike that might do the nightmare scenario, might might outlay the nightmare scenario, which would burden our healthcare facilities so much that we get millions of dead. Mm-hmm. Of course, that nightmare scenario is no longer operative. Right. That's over. We have plenty of stuff. We have plenty of acutely knit uh, masks, and we have PPE, and we have ventilators, and all kinds of things. We, we get all kinds now. of things. We can now absorb this, but we still can't do it because we there won't be a disaster. Mm-hmm. If everybody gets. We wear masks, right? We we put on our seatbelt. We don't expect that we're going to crash our car, but we want to be safe. But we put our, on our seatbelt. We don't expect that we're going to crash our car. I would say that crashing the car is a lot more likely when you get in the car. Um, the odds that you'll be in an accident are much, much, much higher than that you're going to get COVID yes, when you are vaccinated. But also, working on his example... Those of us who have gotten the vaccine have stepped out of the car. Mm-hmm. So those of us who have the vaccine now would be foolish to walk around with seatbelts on because <laughs> we're no longer in the car. We're no longer in the risk situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you could also... So seatbelts don't matter anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's more analogous to wearing a helmet as you walk down the sidewalk just in case a car hits you. Like, it can happen, but... right. Most people don't. So right do now, that. the the risk mm-hmm. we have, since we're no longer in the car, mm-hmm. the risk we have is that an unvaccinated person, in other words, a person in a car, mm-hmm. crashes somewhere, flies out of the windshield, through the windshield, and then hits us walking down the street, flies into us and caroms into us walking down the street, mm-hmm. and that's the risk we have. Mm-hmm. That's what we're just trying to do is make sure everyone is safe. We want to get back to a... Let me tell you something. There is no role in government that's supposed to make sure that everyone is safe. Yeah, that's not a thing. No. That's never been a thing. Yes, life is unsafe. Mm Mm-hmm. When there are uh, foreign, um, uh, you know, actors... When there are um, when there are element foreign elements to the country mm-hmm. trying to harm us, like uh, in a foreign army, it is the government's job to engage that and and defuse right. that threat. Mm-hmm. But to make sure we're safe day by day is not. Yeah, no. Especially we... since, as far as this disease goes. You and I are safe now. Right. I mean, really, the only role the government has is to make sure that people don't do things that are unsafe to other people that didn't ask to be involved in their unsafe decisions. Right. Which is why we, like, outlaw drunk driving, even though, like, it's just me choosing to do something unsafe because, you know, you you have a high risk of injuring someone else when you're drunk driving. So, um, you know, there are cases where... Where we ask people not to do something because it, it there's a high risk that it will affect other people negatively. Once you're vaccinated, the risk that you're going to affect somebody else negatively by just being around vaccinated is incredibly low. It is well below the threshold of things that the government should be involved in. It's, you know, it's not something that that they should be deciding to keep you safe from because it really doesn't impact other people. You know, if you decide to, I mean, there are cases like if you're a worker in a nursing home, I think the nursing home has a right to tell you that you need to be vaccinated to work in that nursing Which home. Which they're not doing, by the way. Yeah, they're not. Right. They're For, not. Because there's another element involved in this, mm-hmm. which is politics and culture. Right. And they're not telling people in nursing homes that they need to be vaccinated because the people in nursing homes uh, may have characteristics that require us to um, use a combination of kid gloves, pandering, and doublespeak. Uh, as well as rap songs. Ra- oh, did we ever play that? We did, we did play the we rap song. We did play song. the rap song. Yes, rap yes. songs. Normal lifestyle. We want to get our economy going, people back at work, restaurants open. You got to do that the right way. And masks help. Vaccinations. Imp- this is so, this has been a theme of this. It's been mm-hmm. really gross. 
is we want to get back on track. We want to get it's the masks. The masks help. That'll mm-hmm. get us in the masks. And this idea that you know, that the, the the spikes have happened everywhere because we let our guard down. Right. Yeah. Remember, Charlie Baker told us that before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I want to have a nice Christmas too. And if we want to have a nice Christmas, you're going to have to be good over Thanksgiving. Because if you're bad over Thanksgiving, your bad behavior is going to get Christmas taken away for everybody. It's so ridiculous because people's behavior over Thanksgiving doesn't appear to really have any impact on spikes or not spikes or anything else. It seems to be largely climate driven, um, largely uh, how much time people spend indoors driven because it is much, much easier to spread indoors and largely uh, in terms of deaths driven by the underlying conditions of the population, obesity, heart problems, age. I mean, these are these are things that would be good to do something about but uh you know we right have- but this has all been part of the large campaign to manipulate behavior mm-hmm. because a bunch of bureaucrats get together and say i i realize that we only need three percent of this campaign but we're going to do 130 percent of this campaign just to make really scare and make sure people comply mm-hmm. and try to ameliorate the risks known or unknown as much as possible even though a lot of them, you know, fell by the wayside, a lot of these risks turned out not to be risks, mm-hmm. and that's w- w- with no regard. And that's why public health officials should not be calling the shots. Right. They should be taken with a grain of salt. Right. So our son, as you know, went for his baseball team pictures um, the other day, mm-hmm. and at his baseball team pictures, they can't do a group picture because even though they're all standing in line next to each other waiting to have their picture taken, they can't stand next to each other in the picture because that would be too dangerous. So they uh, they had to go one at a time, have a picture. They waited next to each other in line, and then they went and took individual pictures. And some of the kids brought a bat to take a picture with, and some they had a few bats there for the kids to use. So um, you know, our kid had to borrow the bat because he couldn't find his bat in typical our house fashion when it was time to leave the house and so he borrowed the bat but in between each kid that touched the bat they sanitized the whole bat (laughs) (laughs) even though surface transmission had been debunked now for weeks they sanitized the baseball bat in between each kid to make sure that they couldn't weren't going to spread covid to each other by touching a bat while taking the team picture important masks help and so even though i'm i'm vaccinated i still wear a mask exactly so why do you why do we have to do that if we're vaccinated that's why i'm so confused because i keep hearing you don't have to wear (laughs) even though i'm vaccinated i still wear a mask why is that well because i make a lot of money and you (laughs) morons won't do what you're told to constantly for whatever reason even though we've spent money in nascar you figured Mm -hmm. that would have pushed you in the right direction so the mighty me the great me uh Xavier Becerra's will wear a, ma- wear a mask, and maybe that'll do it. But still, you could still pass it, or you could still pass it along, even though you've been vaccinated. That's why I'm, I'm you, confused. Yeah, the vaccine's done a really good job of making sure you, you'll not only be safe and healthy, but that you won't infect others. But still, we you never know, and what you're trying to do is encourage others. You never know. Let's make decisions on the basis of you never know. That seems like a reasonable public policy. Uh, stance to have is just we're going to plan for meteor strikes and um, butterfly attacks and tidal waves in the Midwest. I mean, you just never you never know. You just have to plan for everything because you never know. So, uh, OK, we're going to start to pedal away from this. OK, uh, Joe Rogan is in trouble today. Alice, why is he in trouble? Uh, he, from yesterday, he had Dave Smith on, the comedian. Okay. And Rogan, um, Rogan uh, launched into uh, an opinion uh, segment, and um, this is why he's in trouble. If you're like 21 years old and you say to me, "Should I get vaccinated?" I, I go, "No." Yeah. You're, are you healthy? Are you a healthy person? Like, look, don't do anything stupid, but you should take care of yourself. You yeah. should, if you're if you're a healthy person and you're exercising all the time and you're young and you're eating well, and like, I don't think you need to worry about this. People are worried about them doing it for their children. And we talked about this earlier, yeah. There's that the, 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 the you might have to have your, your children vaccinated. And, you know, I can tell you as someone who's both, both my children got the, va- the, the virus, it was nothing. I mean, I hate to say that if someone's children died from this, I'm very sorry that that happened. I'm not, 
I'm not in any way diminishing that. But I'm saying the personal experience that my children had with COVID was nothing. One of the kids had a headache. The other one didn't feel good for a couple of days. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, not feel good. Like, mm, like no, no big deal. No coughing. Right. No, no, no achy. No, like in agony. There was none of that. It was very mild. It was, it was akin to them getting a cold. So he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on this? Twenty-one-year-old healthy person. I mean, I think the fear is that they're gonna like go visit their grandparent and kill their grandparent, right? So, like, I mean, if you have a relative who's older who doesn't want to be vaccinated for whatever reason, and like you're young and you want to visit them and you're worried about it, like I could envision getting vaccinated for that reason. But, um, you know, that's. Yeah, I mean, other than that, he's roughly right. I guess it depends where your risk tolerance is, right? You know, I get the kids all their vaccines, even though they're unlikely to get tuberculosis or whatever, but I get them all. Like, so. So this is Dave Smith, mm -hmm. the other comedian, coming up with another point that I think is interesting. Okay. Yeah, and you can have this thing where it's like you were saying this virtue signaling and this kind of like theatrical display of I get the vaccine, what a good person I am, I care about everyone. But you're like, look, and my, my daughter's a lot younger than your kids, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not injecting my daughter with something to f virtue signal. Right. Like, I'm not doing that. Right. If there's something that she's of no risk, statistically has no risk from, right. I'm sorry. I'm not taking any experiment uh, on her in that. And that's that's my attitude But it's it. amazing that that's controversial. Yeah. That even saying that, I'm not going to inject my child with the vaccine, is controversial. Yeah. It's crazy. Because, again, we are not talking about even the flu that we just found out killed 22,000 people last year. We're not talking about that. Right. We're talking about something that is not statistically dangerous for children but yeah. yet people still want you to get your child vaccinated which is crazy to me yeah like you should be vaccinated if you are vulnerable well right and i mean i think overall i mean herd immunity is a thing right like that once enough people are immune in whatever form naturally or from a vaccine then there's less of the disease around to infect anybody including vulnerable people you know and so, I mean, I agree with that in that sense. I I also agree that, you know, I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm not going to, like, rush to sign our kids up for the vaccine trials or something. Like, I didn't, like, run right out and wait around vaccine clinics trying to get an extra dose because I, like, desperately wanted one as early as possible. I waited until, like, a few hundred million people had had it and nothing bad seemed to have happened to them really en masse. So, you know, it's it's all about, like, how you assess risks personally and stuff. I, to me, it seems obvious that the vaccine is lower risk than COVID, at least for adults. I want to see what happens when they give it to kids before I make a decision. But, uh, you know, I... I kind I feel like I'm kind of down the middle on this basically. Like I want to see what happens, wait a few months. Right. See, you know, and and where COVID's going. Like if COVID We'll see what happens with Rogan and Spotify though. If COVID's gone, then why would I get my kid vaccinated against it? Right. Um oh, uh, now <laughs> Okay. Done with vaccines for the moment. Okay. okay? Um, I want to move over to a piece of audio that I just discovered today that we missed at the climate summit where Biden was mostly wearing his mask the whole time. <laughs> okay. Uh, during one part of the summit, he was uh, speaking to the Navajo Nation. <laughs> so you know how this could go, obviously. What is it with liberals and speaking to to? Oh, well, this guy, Biden. especially Joe Biden. Man, it, and I don't – there's nothing nefarious about this or I don't think malicious or, or anything, but he's just an odd – duck sometimes we're helping ourselves we're helping others this and this in this endeavor it really is important and and uh i just want to say uh one thing to uh bird of the navajo nation let my wife come home she likes the navajo nation too much she keeps being out there she's been out there for two days she was out there before i don't know you know what i mean i called her i said where are you? i said oh, i'm staying another day so you know let her come home okay I don't want to, you know, that's too far for me to commute. Um. I, I shouldn't be so. But anyway, look, this is this is about what we can do together. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I don't consider. Sometimes it doesn't uh, hit the mark, Joe. Yeah. I just, uh... Well, and people, I did actually hear this. And I, if people are trying to make it like that 
he doesn't know where Jill is because he has dementia. I don't think that's quite what's happening. I think it's more like, you know, I, I think he just tried to make a joke that didn't land mostly. But yeah, he's an odd, he's an odd fellow. And I think that he doesn't necessarily have his finger on the pulse of uh, culture anymore. Necessarily. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I disagree. All right, Alice, what housekeeping do we have here? Uh, you're all excited about the uh, congressional something, new congressman? Oh, uh, yes, the are census. We, so the census, okay, so this decides how much representation we get in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, in Massachusetts, Alice, the Bay State, are we getting, are we losing or gaining? We are staying the same. Okay. Actually, most states are staying the same. So, um... This is, by the way, this is Alice Shattuck. Uh, so, politics porn. She yeah, loves this more than anything. This is there great. Are <laughs> populations, demographics involved in this. There's districting. Okay. This is all. So the U.S. population rose about 7% in the last 10 years between 2010 and 2020, which is low. That's like on par with how much the population rose in the Great Depression. But unlike the Great Depression, where that was like a random low decade and then it like went back up we've been like trending downward for a long time so now we've like re reached great depression levels of low population growth in the united states which is a problem if you like social security and medicare and like plan on collecting those things right. for 40 years when you're old um but in any case then they decide who gets how many congressmen based on that and we have in the united states um only actually like fairly recently in our history a fixed number of congressmen mm -hmm. we don't like just increase the number so it's not like everybody gets more congressmen but some people get more um which so, is an issue that's debated right there's I, some people that feel like there should be like six thousand congressmen. i think that'd be kind of cool like it would first of all make congress people feel much less important about themselves mm -hmm. if they were like a wild raucous town hall meeting with like tons of them in there um and also like I think I, I just think it would make Congress much more interesting. Like, look at the New Hampshire state legislature, where it's like it's not a paid job, so like lots of wacky people run to do it and like get elected. And um, that's happening in the Congress. Congress, though, it's not right. That's true, but it tends people take it a little more seriously because being in Congress is a good gig because mm -hmm. you're pretty powerful if you're in Congress, you know. And I think that sort of diluting that a bit by making there be more of them could be. You know, good, and they'd be more answerable. You know, if your if your congressman is only elected by you know if you, ten thousand tens of thousands of votes instead of hundreds of thousands, then you know they're they're closer to the district, they're closer to you, they're more answerable. I mean, I definitely think that's something that like I could be arguing to be in favor of. But in any case, we have a fixed number of congressmen, as you know, and so when we have a census. They get divided up and they don't just get divided up between states, but like within the state. If a lot of people move within the state, the district lines have to be redrawn. So they're roughly equal now where people are. So but anyway, we'll focus. They haven't redrawn. The states haven't all redrawn their lines yet because they've been waiting to find out how many they get. So now um, six states this year lost a seat. So that's California, uh, Illinois, Michigan. Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and West Virginia all lost one congressman. And then, um, sorry, that's seven states. I lied. Seven states lost a congressman, and six states gained a congressman, but Texas gained two. So, um, so seven lost one, and six gained one. And the ones that gained are uh, North Carolina... Uh, Florida, Texas gained two. Uh, who am I missing? Montana and Colorado and Oregon each gained one. So those states all got one. I would say overall that's probably a positive on net for Republicans that you have like New York and California, Illinois losing Congress people, and you know Texas getting two, Florida getting one. Uh, you know, and it obviously it's going to depend how these districts get drawn and everything, and it's going to depend even more what's actually going on in the world in the next few years. But um, that's going to be interesting to watch play out. I think people are fleeing the uh, certain areas of the country, like the 
uh, the Great Lakes region and heading south. So, and projections are that the south is going to continue to become more powerful electorally in the coming years. So. Right. We'll see what that means. Um, obviously. I mean, yeah, the south I mean, because be unfortunately, both. you know, Texas is getting a lot of um, Californians, but mm-hmm. Austin's getting a and lot of. And Mexicans. Right. And I don't know what that means. What does that mean voting wise? Um, well, I guess it means Democrats. I, it, well, right now, but then again, mm-hmm. that could be changing too. That's a long. Um, that's a long story. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, interesting stuff. We're heading towards 2022 faster than we can even imagine. New so, elections coming soon. So um, this is the um, LSU women's basketball coach Kim Mulkey. We've played her before. She's not a fan. Well, I'm gonna take this damn mask off. Because I have a lot to say. Here we go. We like mm-hmm. her. No doubt about that. Also, Alice, mm-hmm. I was uh, I made an appearance. I can't say I'm I, I let me just I'll just tell you that I spoke with the guys from the local Fatso's podcast. Mm-hmm. Cool guys. I'm not saying that we recorded an episode of their show, uh, but they may uh, have some information about that tomorrow morning. So I don't want to step on anything if that's going to be happening. Okay. But um, uh, good guys, cool guys, interesting mm-hmm. guys. I probably, you, if you, so this is, I don't get to hang around with guys like in their like 20s and early 30s anymore. Mm-hmm. So my feeling is if I sat with them for an interview, which I may have, is that there's a chance I pathetically wanted them to think I was cool and hip <laughs> like them too. So, and, you know, they see, they know that I'm a geriatric, um, essentially Mm -hmm. expired person. And so they're like, okay, you don't really need to be that, try to be cool. I'm like, yeah, the chick at the hospital was really hot when I had my daughter. And they're like, okay, um, yeah, you sound, so uh, forgive me, uh, Alice, if you listen to this, if, if there was a podcast, if you listen to it, at how pathetic and grovelly I was to chill with the millennials okay honey i'll forgive you thank you but uh they were cool mm-hmm. cool bunch of guys and mm-hmm. i enjoyed it i have a sub stack tomorrow tomorrow i'm on wtic travelers insurance company tomorrow morning at nine anti-meridian east coast time alice mm-hmm. nine to noon and um then we have to oh and then a sub stack we get i gotta write another column very shortly, I think I know what I'm going to write about. It's going to have to do with masks, I think. Oh, good. And um, and then you've got to go to the um, warehouse tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Then we do it all again. We'll talk to you of guys course. again as we do every. And tomorrow is Biden's big night. Tomorrow. Oh night. goodness gracious! That's right. The big hundred days. I get the feeling that we turned the corner on the coronavirus, mm-hmm. and that childhood poverty is about to be uh, totally. Um, eradicated. Eradicated, exactly. And that was in the great work that the vice president is doing as well I'm on so the glad border. They fixed the education system. Yes, the vice president is fixing things, the border, yeah. the border of Guatemala and El Salvador as we speak. Uh, thanks so much for listening, guys. As always, this is Tom Shattuck and Alice Shattuck. We're on Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel. You can find us at burnbarrelpodcast.com as well as on various social media sites like Twitter, where we are Burn Barrel Pod. We are at facebook.com slash burn barrel podcast. Also on Gab and Parlor at Burn Barrel Podcast. You can check out our YouTube channel. That's Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel on YouTube. And you can like and leave a comment. You can also shoot us an email if that's your preferred mode of communication. That's burnbarrelpodcast at gmail.com. 